Uh, I'm Carol Mickelson, the coordinator of the Nats Art Song Composition Award Program. Uh, and I'm here to report to you that the 2010 Composition Award Contest has been very successful. There were 80 entries, all quality entries. Uh, and we've come up with wonderful winners, a first and second place winner, and uh, two honorable mentions, and other finalists. Uh, before presenting it, I would like to thank a few people. There are many people who need thanking, of course, but of course it's the national office staff who do so much of the work, Alan and everyone else who works there. I have a committee, of a screening committee of two people, uh, Lucinda Schultz and Tian Retief, who have been doing this for 10 years. They go through all the packets and make sure that all the T's are crossed and the the uh, I's are dotted and so forth before, before entries are accepted. Uh, and then of course I'd like to thank the preliminary judges. The three preliminary judges for the 2010 competition are, and I'm going to refer to them as saints. It's Saint Catherine Eberly Fink, uh, who teaches at the University of Iowa, uh, Brian Horn, who uh, teaches at Indiana University Bloomington and is the treasurer of the Nats Foundation and the teacher of the winner, first place winner last night. Um, and uh, Christina Howell, who teaches at Clayton State University in Morrow, Georgia. Uh, they, do, they have to listen to every one of these entries and it takes weeks and months and it's a difficult jazz and I really appreciate their wonderful work. And this year, our final judge was Tom Chapulo, whom, as you know, was the winner of the 2008 Nats Composition Award Contest. He had very, he only heard the uh, 12 finalist um, scores. And, I want, and this is what Tom said of all 12. He said that uh, they're all precious jewels worthy of our hearing. Uh, two mentions of, <clears throat> the of the 12 finalists that who are Nats members. One is Judith Cloud, uh, <clears throat> who teaches at the University of Northern Arizona and I think was going to be here. Uh, Carol Kimball wrote an article that appeared in the May-June uh, Journal of Singing about Judith's work. And then Tim Hookman, who's a long-term Nats member, who has entered the competition maybe four times and has always been a finalist. And I want to point that out, not that he's never won, but that his work is so consistent that he is always a finalist. Uh, the two honorable mentions were Timothy Stevens' Letters to the World, which Tom called an important addition to the repertoire of the Dickinson settings, and Love Letters from a War by Charisse Leiter, which he describes as a deeply moving personal and extraordinarily moving work by a composer with a distinctive individual voice. The second place winning composition is In the Garret by Christina Whitten Thomas. In the Garret is a cycle of six songs for soprano and piano, mirroring the six sections of Louisa May Alcott's poem of this title. Ms. Thomas resides in Pasadena, California as a singer, a private voice and flute teacher she writes both song and choral music. Um, and, had, and she was a finalist in the 2006 Art Song Composition Award. Uh, Tom says of her work, I loved this piece. It is an extraordinarily moving work, thoughtfully constructed and shaped with great skill and commitment. In the Garret is at once constantly surprising and completely inevitable. I hope this piece is performed a thousand times it deserves a permanent place in the repertoire. And now for the first place winning composition, it is Missed Connections by New York composer David Sisko. The text of Missed Connections is based on anonymous Craigslist postings. <laughs> Very unique. Uh, and Tom Chapulo says of this piece, this is a work of tremendous variety filled with whimsy and also very touching. Extremely well written for the voice and filled with challenging though idiomatic piano writing. Miss Connections is the work of an immensely talented and engaging composer. Those are nice words, aren't they? <laughs> uh, all the information about Tom is, is I mean about David is uh, 
display there in the program, but I would say that he's one of the most versatile uh, artists that I've, that I've heard of. He's is a singer of musical theater and classical music. He's also a voice teacher of musical theater and classical music. He currently teaches at uh, Marymount Manhattan in the theater department. And he is a composer of music in both those genres. And he's a playwright, having won awards as a playwright, and a librettist, and an orchestrator, and just the list goes on and on. So now, without further ado, we'd like to welcome David to the podium, for, to the Nats Convention, and to the podium to tell us about Miss Connections and the performers. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am so incredibly honored to have this opportunity to share my music with you. Being uh, both a voice teacher and an active performer, I have a full appreciation of what this award means and just wanted to take a moment also to thank some people, uh, Alan Henderson, certainly Carol Mickelson and, and all of her staff, um, Joan Adams, Deborah Guess, the adjudicators and all those affiliated with this wonderful, wonderful award. I find that uh, composers' reflections on their work are often as enthralling as sitting through a slideshow of a friend's family vacation, so um, I will try to keep my comments very brief. As some of you may know, um, Missed Connections is a posting site on craigslist.com where people can try to reconnect with those they uh, met spontaneously in a, in a park or a restaurant or a subway. Um, it, it's a whole world unto itself, which is probably why it enticed me to, uh, to uh, create a song cycle around it. While the universal themes of longing and voicing private thoughts bind the songs together, the varied texts allowed me to um, use multiple musical idioms from classical to con uh, contemporary pop. I also found this, attractive, this an attractive idea because the younger generation can relate to these texts while perhaps unbeknownst to them being drawn into one of the most intimate and transformative musical genres, the art song. I'm lucky to have had a muse for this song cycle, my dear friend Elizabeth Mondragon, who will be singing this afternoon's performance. You will see why I've written for her for over 10 years. She is a wonderful technician and is innately expressive. I'm also incredibly grateful to Dr. Andrew Adams, who is a fierce pianist and phenomenal co uh, collaborator, two prerequisites for this song cycle. I have just one final thought to share. Several years ago, I attended a, a panel discussion on political theater, and someone in the audience asked John Patrick Shanley, who of course wrote the play and screenplay of Doubt, if he thought theater was dying. And Shanley said, look, the theater will never die. It'll never be well, but it'll never die. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but I feel very much the same way about contemporary art song. And yeah, I think we have a unique opportunity here to make sure that contemporary art song takes an even more prominent place in the canon of great vocal literature. If you have not already, I would ask you to ask your students, your young voice students, to find a composer to write for them for their undergraduate or graduate recitals. We need each other, don't we? Our young students need to know what it's like to to, to create a piece, something they can't find a recording of on YouTube, thank God. <laughs> Can I get an amen on that, okay? <laughs> right. And they need to know what it's like to collaborate with a composer. And our young composers need to know what it's like to tailor a piece to a particular voice and to learn how to intelligently set text. And besides, you just never know when a singer and composer will develop in a relationship an abiding relationship like the one I've been blessed to have with Elizabeth for these many, many years. Thank you so much for this honor. I am deeply grateful. I hope you enjoy my song cycle, Missed Connections, and please join me in welcoming the artists.
assuming this is who I think it is.